Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at one of the new Linux Mint releases. This is the Mate release. And I, I downloaded the XFCE and the Mate, but I'm like, you know what? I do the XFC a lot. And I've talked in the past that Mate is not my wildly favorite desktop environment. I don't hate it. I just don't see a real compelling reason to really like it. Uh, it's not necessarily super lightweight. It's not necessarily modern. So it's somewhere in between XFCE and Cinnamon. That being said, it is still a good and popular desktop environment. And I do want to go ahead and look at the video, especially since I was wondering and uh, we were speculating on the video on last Thursday, I believe, you know, where does it RAM usage sit closer to Cinnamon or closer to XFCE? So that's one of the questions we are going to uh, answer today. And uh, so I did want to go ahead and give uh, this distro a little bit of love and uh, talk about a little bit more about the recent Linux Mint 21.1 Vera uh, release. Of course, uh, all you Pink Floyd guys are now singing Vera, Vera, what has become of you? All right. Um, but uh, with that, um, there were actually two I guess among some people, somewhat controversial things around this. That being, some people did not like the new folder design. I actually liked the new folder design. I might be the outlier in that, which they said they will look at the folders again in 21.2. Once again, the Linux Mint team saying, hey, we really do listen to our community. Uh, the other one was the mouse pointers, which I didn't see the mouse pointers specifically addressed, uh, but they were radical enough. And I, I don't know, I, I'm 50-50. I'm, I'm um, they do look non-traditional. And so you can see my mouse pointer on the screen there. That's the, the one back from, I think I'm on Linux Mint 20 something, 21 maybe, I forget. Not 21, but 20.1, I think, is what's on this computer right here. Um, but... Uh, the new mouse cursors do look different enough, and so that's one of the things that they addressed uh, that some people have uh, have not liked. So we'll go ahead and have a look at what this has to offer. Of course, uh, the Mate version, um, if you're looking to download it, it requires 2 gigs of RAM, 4 gigs for comfortable usage. That possibly suggests the RAM usage is going to be closer to Cinnamon. 20 gigs of desktop space and 1024 by 768 resolution. And uh, by now, if you are running an older version, you can upgrade to the latest 21.1 in the Upgrade Manager. So you do have that option as well. There are a series of download links. Let's have a look at the release notes first. Um, there are just a few issues. Boot, out of, uh, boot error out of memory. Uh, shutdown timeout. Um, so... Let's see, um, Grub2 theme and, and high DPI. So apparently uh, the high DPI is something I've not messed around with a, a whole ton. Um, I don't use monitors that are all that great. I use, you know, lower end monitors because I don't really care. Um, I'm not a gamer. I, there's nothing I do that requires um, pixels so fine that uh, my eye can't distinguish them anyway. Uh, but for those that do... Um, uh, there is some some work on that, but it just requires an extra package. Uh, Snap Store, of course, is disabled like it is in all Linux Mints, and they have a guide on about how to set it up if you want to. Some considerations for VirtualBox. Uh, home directory encryption is going to be slower than full disk encryption. I personally prefer full disk encryption when I have that option. And then we just have a few other things. Uh, particular interest um, that might be relevant is, I think it was Toshiba Computers specifically. Um, there was an issue with the keyboard. Where's that at? It's in here somewhere. Uh, Lenovo keyboards. Um, so Lenovo laptops might have uh, so keyboard issues, which apparently is something wrong with Ubuntu, not Linux Mint. But uh, they do have that included in there. And a few other little things. As far as new features in Mate, uh, Linux Mint 21.1 Mate, then uh, it does have uh, a lot of the, the new changes. So in brief, brief summary, they removed the desktop icons by default, but they still do work. Like they haven't removed the ability as desktop icons. They just removed the, the home, my computer, uh, networking, um, trash can. They removed all those by default. 
um, off the desktop. They are still available there. Uh, they added, of course, the new themes with the more vibrant colors. Um, those were not just exclusive to Cinnamon. Those are in Mate and XFCE as well. Uh, but they did talk a little bit about that. Here's your vibrant colors. Here's the old look versus the new look. Uh, this is actually why I liked the newer folders. What they did is they they got rid of the folders that so that everything was green. And when they went with the vibrant colors, if you remember a couple years ago, they ch did try to go with vibrant colors, but it was so hard to look at because the vibrant colors were everywhere. So what you see now is that they mute some of the highlights so that while we have more vibrant colors, and you'll see the default is now aqua, uh, they've muted it in a few areas so that you're not looking at a giant wall of contrasty colors. This is actually why I looked in new folders, um, but I can completely understand, and I'm not married to the folders uh, one way or the other. Of course, they do have um, uh, the ability to do the panel in the modern or the traditional desktop colors, um, and then this was the mouse pointer. And yeah, I'm kind of on board. I really don't like the new mouse pointers, except the weight pointer. The, the weight cursor is a color wheel. Uh, I do like the like the, the weight pointer. I'm not a huge fan of these weird triangles, though. But I think that that's all very subjective, and you have a variety of mouse cursors available uh, to you. So just if you don't like the default, you can change it back. Of course, they have... Uh, four other icon packs in addition to the the uh, mint um, uh, new and the legacy options. They have Breeze, Papyrus, Numix, and Yara. Uh, so you do have a number of different options available for that. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm going to jump on over to the desktop view. And uh, we are running this in GNOME Boxes. And uh, GNOME Boxes, I am finding, does generally work better than the newer versions of VirtualBox, which started to um, not work quite as well once we hit version 6. And now I hear 7 is even worse, so I can't wait to try that out. Uh, but we are running this on GNOME Boxes instead. And... Um, what we're going to do then is uh, first the installation. Uh, it is an installation slightly different than the Ubuntu one, but if you're not really paying close attention, it's going to look pretty identical. Probably took me, I don't know, 10 minutes or so to install on the system. And uh, once we got there, we are on the very first boot. So let's go ahead and boot into Linux Mint Mate for the very first time. I think that this is just some of our settings inside GNOME boxes is the uh, display. Now, of course, Cinnamon put the display um, uh, settings inside the context menu. We don't have that on Mate. Uh, so let's just go ahead and manually change our display settings so everything works better. So let's go ahead and apply that. We're going to keep this configuration. There we have it. Now we're looking a little bit better. Uh, this is the um, live key up there, still in the CD drive. So we do still have the CD drives uh, icons on the desktop. Okay, that's good to know. Let's uh, look for the desktop appearances. And just want to have a brief look at uh, what that's going to say in them. All right. So there's your themes, fonts, interface. And since I don't use Mate as much, I don't remember exactly where everything is at. Uh, so we'll figure out where our settings are. Anyway, here's our pointers. So if you don't like the pointers they've given you, you can choose a variety of different pointers. We're just going to go ahead and keep with those. Here's, of course, your icons. We do have the old uh, colors, uh, folders of the same colors if you wanted to use those. Here's your window borders. And then here's your color settings. All right, so there's that. Let's go ahead and have a look at our first steps. So, uh, of course, we can start by picking our accent and whether we want light or dark. Uh, let's go today. Let's go red and dark. Uh, it gives us some nice contrast, so that'll work out pretty nicely. We have our uh, time shift uh, system snapshots in here. Is that time shift? Is that what it's called? Or is that time? Yeah, okay. I keep on getting that mixed up with the app one. I never use it. So I don't remember what the thing is. Uh, driver managers, if there's any drivers you want to do. Your update manager, system settings, software manager, and firewall. Let's launch our system settings first. 
Uh, I want to see if I can find the desktop icons. There's desktop settings. There we are. So you can see mounted volumes, which is our CD drive, is selected. Everything else is off by default. You can turn them back on if those are things that you want to be used. Of course, you can turn them off if you don't. And then we have some compositor settings, interface settings, and things like that. All right. So as far as our software center, if we click in over here, now that's, uh, you'll see that cursor there that I have. That's the colored one. That's the one I like. All right, let's apply the update here. And then uh, there's nothing in here that's going to be unusual for the previous versions. I almost failed at my entering my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. All right, uh, as far as our applications installed, um, we have the, the menu here in Mate is searchable. We have our favorites over here. And then we have uh, the different, uh, uh, the different uh, here's our system software. And then we have our computers. And then if you want to see all applications, now you can sift down over here and see what all is installed. So once again, just like uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon, they do give us a variety of applications that do make it feel like a full suite. So we have a USB image writer, stick formatter. Uh, we have our Redshift settings, Warpinator for sharing files on your system. We have character maps, calculators, archive managers, a dictionary. That's exciting. Uh oh, we gotta we gotta check the dictionary. We gotta know. We gotta know. Okay, the to act the part of a woman. What? Okay, to make feminish, to furnish or unite to a woman. Okay. To the act part of a one. Okay, I guess as a playwright. I don't know. If that's from 1913, though, that's okay. All right, so here's all the various updates we have. Um, now, you'll remember the new version of Linux Mint, uh, starting with 21.1, the update manager had an update, and it gives us the I the um, uh, the icon over here gives us our type. So we have an upgrade to the software version. The sh ones with the shield are security updates. And then we have, uh, this is a kernel update. Now, the other thing that the update manager will now run is flat packs as well. We'll have the flat pack icon here as well, which by default, um, it does not have flat packs installed, but it is all set up to use flat packs. All right. Uh, so that's what we have over there. Let's go ahead and have a look at our kernel version. So running command for a kernel version, we are at 515. Now, I did when we tested the Linux Mint uh, Cinnamon, we didn't have the option to add extra kernels. I want to see if that was just because we were in beta. So right now, it only goes up to 515. Uh, I'm sure with some documentation, we can add new kernels should we want to. I've done that in the past. Whoa, what is up with those icons? Look at that. Reshifting corner icons. That's exciting. All right, um, so we have uh, 515, and I don't think HTOP is installed. Nope, it's not. Let's just install it real quick. sudo apt install uh, HTOP. I just want to do this with HTOP instead of with the, the built-in system. We'll go ahead and have a look at both of them now. So there we go. Now we'll run HTOP. So this is telling us that we are using just about a gig of RAM. So it is actually, in my opinion, a little bit closer to XFCE with RAM usage, uh, which RAM usage on uh, Linux Mint XFCE is close to this, whereas Cinnamon would be double this, easily uh, two gig instead of one. So um, overall, I'd say that it does work out pretty nicely. So um, let's just go ahead and uh, close down out of there. Let's look at the built-in system monitor as well see if that gives us a different reading on the ram yeah this does see see that this ram usage now is a 1.9 so this is close to that wait what's going on here htop <laughs> okay something's going on here all right the htop is reporting right now 900 megabytes this built-in system monitor is reporting two gigabytes what is going on here um, which one is more accurate to what's actually going on? Anybody have any thoughts about that? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Inquiring minds would like to know. All right. Um, I'm going to close that, close that. Um, and then let's see, we have our office suite. So we have the full LibreOffice. Of course, they even give us the databasing, uh, set in. 
Um, we have the library, which was a new feature, not this version, um, but uh, it will give us a list of all the recent documents um, shown up. Uh, here inside of our sound and video, we have celluloid. We can't talk about this H word program because we actually get a community strike for talking about that. Completely free and open source, totally public domain application. Uh, but such as the Tubies, uh, of course, if you are concerned, we might disappear for talking about H word applications. You can follow us over on uh, on Odyssey or Rumble or BitChute as well. We have Rhythmbox. Um, nothing else has really changed there. There's your time shift and then your basic administrations. All right, so there is back to our favorites, and that is what we have inside of here. So overall, we have a good, competent suite of applications, and um, we do have the uh, we do have the basically a lot of the the new functions and features. Now, this one here, we actually had a picture with the traditional and the non-traditional, which. I think is not necessarily applicable to this one, but that was actually in our system notes if you saw it earlier. And I was curious about that. Do they give us a more traditional size? You know, basically the bigger panel. Well, if you want the bigger panel, we can go ahead and do some panel property adjustments. You can do that. If you want a bigger panel, there you go. There's how to get a bigger panel <laughs> for those that want it. All right. Uh, there is our look over here at Linux Mint Mate. Overall, I can't tell the memory use. Is it one gig or two gig of RAM? I don't know. HTOP and the uh, system monitor are giving me completely different results. I have no idea. Um, I do use Linux Mint Mate is actually installed on my uh, what I term my backup computer, which is a um, a operating system that just manages all of my personal backup files and things like that. And I it does kind of get in my way a little bit more than XFCE and Cinnamon do, which is why I've kind of fallen out of favor of it. But overall, Mate is a very competent, a fairly lightweight desktop environment. It doesn't have the modern elements that Cinnamon has, like integrating online accounts and things like this, um, but it doesn't have the old or more stale feel that you sometimes can get with XFCE. So for that, I think Mate is a good and competent desktop environment. It's just one I haven't had a lot of use in over the years and the times that I have used it I haven't been quite as happy with it but I will say that if you are looking for a good replacement for a Windows or a Mac uh, the Linux Mint any of the Linux Mints are going to be good of course you have to, if you have a super low older spec computer Linux Mint XFCE is going to be the best choice if you have latest hardware Linux Mint Cinnamon is probably going to give you a more modern feel but Mate does sit right in the middle at that approach for people that don't want something super modern but want something that does feel good and uh, traditional overall i really think this is a good distribution and uh frankly the um i'm looking to, looking forward to see what they do with the folders the um the uh, cursors those are kind of i think two things that people have really not liked about the newer versions. I liked the folders. I wasn't a huge fan of the cursors. As far as everything else, though, the desktop environments, um, whichever one of these three you're using, they're all going to be good. They're going to be themed really well coming from the Linux Mint team. And you're going to get a full operating system with all of the tools that you need right out of the box to do a lot of the work that you need to do. So that's really why I like the Linux Mint operating system and why I stick with it so much over the years. With that, thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.